Welcome to the Dr. Gundry Podcast. We got a really special one today for you. Uh, I'm gonna be speaking with Dave and Jan Hales. So since 2017, they've chronicled their plant paradox journey on their YouTube channel, AZ Life Cooking. So their journey hasn't always been a smooth one, but Dave and Jan are gonna show how you can easily adapt your habits for a healthier and tastier lifestyle. So on today's show, we're gonna talk about their journey, share some tips about how to stick with the plant paradox diet and discuss how you can get started on your own plant paradox journey today. So Dave and Jan, so happy to have you here. And we're so Thank excited you. to be here. We're, yeah. we're thrilled. All right, so we were talking off camera. Now you're from Arizona now, yeah. but originally from, from Utah, Utah, yeah. kind of south of South Lake. Uh, north of Salt Lake. Yeah. North of Salt Lake, yeah. <laughs> and how the heck did you end up in Arizona? Well, about uh, six years ago, I think, I, I've had Crohn's disease for about 20 years, 20, yeah, about 20 years, diagnosed for 20 years. <laughs> I think I've had it longer than that, but, um, and I struggle a lot. Like I would end up in the hospital six, seven times a year for pain meds um, for that. And I happen to be reading a study, you're probably more familiar with this than, than me, but there's a big group of nurses that, that some research university follows. The, the results said something like 65% of people who lived in a climate similar to California or Arizona where there's not a lot of weather change, they were 65% less likely to get Crohn's disease. And then people who had Crohn's disease and then moved to that sort of climate, about the same number of people saw an improvement in their health. And I'm like, what do you think about warm, sunny weather? And she's like, let's go check it out. And we moved and, and it started us on that journey of, of healing. And, uh, that, and, it, and, it, and it has made a difference. I mean, it did, the weather did. Well, what they didn't realize in that study and in subsequent studies is what changed was that you actually got more sunlight and your, it, your, your vitamin D level yeah. went up. And, yeah. you know, I write constantly about the importance of vitamin D in actually uh, improving your, the wall of your gut health. We yeah. were uh, just listening to that on your new book. Yeah. Yes, yeah. we love it. In fact, uh, just saw a young lady uh, yesterday from the LA area, 15 years old, with, uh, she's lost 60 pounds in the last two years after uh, developing a Crohn's-like uh, illness. And one of the first things we found on her blood test was that her vitamin D level was 27 nanograms per milliliter. And I like, as you know, people to have it around 100. Yeah. Um, and we found through the years that one of the things that unites all sufferers of GI issues is usually a low vitamin D level. Um, and vitamin D does two things. And excuse me for taking over here for a second. No, it's good. But vitamin D, number one, we know part of the problem with, with all of these autoimmune diseases is that there's a type of white blood cell called a T cell. And the T cell normally listens to vitamin D and vitamin D says, hey, relax, uh, calm down. You don't have to get so crazy. Everything's not your enemy and chill out. In people with autoimmune diseases, the T cell doesn't listen to vitamin D properly. So we basically have to use a vitamin D sledgehammer and go, hey, pay attention. And one of the things that's you know, fascinating to watch is that as we get people's vitamin D level up, um, their immune system quiets down. Number two, we all have lots and lots and lots of stem cells in the lining of our gut. But some of the new research says that those stem cells, which would normally help repave our gut, just sit there and twiddle their thumbs without being stimulated by vitamin D to grow and divide. Hmm. So once again, I think one of the real keys that you know, I've discovered through 20 years of this now 
is the role vitamin D has. And so you moving from, you know, half the year it's kind of cloudy right. <laughs> uh, down to pure sunshine, right. uh, you, you know, invariably got your vitamin D higher. So, yeah. so uh, good for you. Good. We love it. Yeah. So you should have moved to California, but you know. <laughs> A little expensive. So, so how do you, so, it, yeah, and let me go back for one other. You probably had Crohn's long before you were diagnosed yeah, with yeah, it. I do. What was going on in your life? Did you, I mean, would you just thought you had funny bowels and? I, I had graduated college, gotten into my first real job, small company growing, and I just thought it was all stress related because I was under a lot of stress at the mm -hmm. time. A new family, new kids. Um, Young kids, I should say. <laughs> and so I just thought it was all related to stress. I'm like, I'm just overly, overly stressed. Um, and stress, of course, flares those inflammatory conditions up. So. Uh, and with working such long hours, Dave's diet, of course, consisted of fast food. Um, I was at candy. home. Candy. <laughs> lots of candy. Yeah. I was at home prepping meals, so he didn't eat a lot of processed food such for dinner. Um, but for breakfast, it was always cold cereal, sugary, sugary cold cereal. And lunch was usually on the run with Yeah, I mean, food. it was just fast food. I mean, lunch and dinner, fast food usually, yeah. Because I was working, you know, 60, 70 hours a week. And then just a lot of stress, you know. So uh, it took about two years. Uh, you know, initially they were, even when I first got diagnosed with Crohn's disease, I would go into the hospital if I was having pain. I'm like, I have Crohn's disease. And they'd say, you have a what? They'd never heard of it. Mm -hmm. Really? That was 20 years ago. And, uh, and you know, I even had some doctors go, well, let me go look that up. Because that sounds familiar, but I haven't. Yeah. And it's amazing now. I can talk to almost any person on the street and say, I have Crohn's disease. Like, oh, yeah, my sister has that. Or, oh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing how many more gastrointestinal issues I've met in the 20 years since I know I've had one. Well, that brings up a very good point. Um, you know, when I when I was in medical school back in the dark ages, we we did know about Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. And actually, as a surgeon, I operated on a number of people with Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis, taking out pieces of their intestines and telling them that you'll be back right. <laughs> uh, because I'm going to take out more of your intestines or you're going to develop uh, this is pretty gross, but you're going to develop fistulas coming oh, yeah. out of oh, yeah. your skin. And uh, yeah, it's, um, it's devastating. Yeah. And we, we just go, yeah, this is what's happening to you. And, you know, get over it. And we really didn't have much of a hope. Exactly what my surgeon told me, literally. Yeah. yeah. So, but I think you bring up a very important point. These were rare um, yeah. a while back. And now, you know, every other commercial on TV we see for, you know, Medication. medications yeah. and, you know, um, and I think, and certainly the evidence is that our autoimmune diseases have just, you know, gone through the roof oh, wow. in, in the last 50 years, last 20 years. And you're obviously one. Uh, anybody in the family have anything like this looking back? Uh, autoimmune diseases, yeah. yeah. My, my mom has multiple sclerosis. My brother has multiple scler sclerosis. Um, another brother. Another brother has uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, and what else? Interestingly enough, Jen game... has rheumatoid arthritis, or uh -huh. had, uh -huh. until the plant paradox. <laughs> yeah. Game changer. You made my life. Seriously, I can't thank you enough. You don't know how hard it was. For yeah. me, before I did this diet. Yeah, it was bad for her. It was really hard. And to be 44 years old and have feel like I was an 85-year-old and not a good 85-year-old. Because <laughs> we're going to be healthy at 85 and yes. you know, bike riding and all that, right? Right. <laughs> my, my kids, to make a trip to the store, my kids would have to drive me. They'd have to hold on to me so I could even walk. I couldn't even go get the mail out of the mailbox. That's how, and before, prior to this, I was biking 25 miles a day. I was always very, very active. And then it hit and my life just, it was very depressing to go from being so active and, and everything just to laying on the couch, 
or a lot of times I would just lay in the pool in a float just to give my body a rest from the pain. And so, thank you. I, I, I think <laughs> that you don't realize how many people you've helped. You really need to realize that. What a difference, what a change you're making. Well, thank you. And that's why I do this. And you know, that's why I still see patients uh, every day, even on the weekends. Wow. Um, I know, when, it, when you need <laughs> it. Uh, but it's because of this. And it's because of you know, people writing and saying, you know, change, change my life. How many times were you told that th there was nothing wrong with you, <laughs> that this was all in your head? Constantly. And, and I would just, I started to question myself and say, am I going crazy? Do, am, I, am I imagining the pain? Uh, you know, have I become, you know, a hypochondriac when there's nothing wrong? I'm just trying to get attention. And I would go over that and over that in my mind. And that just contributed to the depression because I'm like, why do I feel like this? No one can see it, but I feel horrible. And she had a doctor say once, um, well, you are getting older. I'm like, you're 44. You shouldn't be feeling like this. You know? Right. <laughs> I, that or was... you're going through the change. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Or of course you're tired. You got kids. Yeah. yeah I've heard sure. that a number of times too. Sure. No, absolutely. That was such a common thing. And I think for women, um, you know, if you've had that said to you, it's so depressing. And, and I wasn't ready to settle. I have grandkids that I want to hang out with. I have grandkids that I want to play with. They're not born yet. Ah, I was going to say, boy, you got started they're early. Coming. They're coming. <laughs> so once they get here, I want to be active with them. I want to be out playing. I don't want to be on the sidelines thinking, oh, I remember when I used to be able to run and play. I want to be actively doing that. So I decided, and really it was through Dave's support, I'm not taking this as an answer. We are doing something else. We are gonna keep searching and finding that. And really it was awesome to have Dave's support to not let me settle for that lifestyle and continue to just lay on the couch and be miserable. So, so you're miserable, he's miserable. <laughs> um, what, tell me what happened next? My sister actually um, probably I don't remember when your book first came out. It seems like it was around April 2017. Yeah, literally two years ago. Yeah. And uh, I think May of 2017, yes. my sister sent me your book. She just ordered it and said, hey, I've been reading this book. Now, she doesn't suffer from any problems. She just wanted to lose a little weight. Um, but she's like, I've been reading it, and they keep talking about autoimmune diseases, and I think you should read it. I had it for about six weeks, and when you're chronically ill, people are always trying to sell you on Constantly. something. Constantly. And I've tried other diets, I'd tried eating healthy, I'd tried eating super clean. I always lost weight, felt better, but my Crohn's never improved. So I'm like, here's another diet. And then this was at the same time she was two years ago, uh, at 44, two years ago, she was miserable. And finally one day I'm looking at her on the couch, you know, she's, her life had just gone to a standstill and the book is sitting in front of me. I'm like, you know what, I'm gonna pick that book up and read it. So I heard flipping through it and immediately I found some of the stories with patients with rheumatoid arthritis where it had cleared up and I'm like, Jan, you've got to read this book. And so we come to California a couple times a month, sometimes at least because we're big Disneyland fans. And so on our drive down to California, it's about five and a half hours. She started reading the book. And I would share with Dave, oh, listen to this, honey, listen to this. And we finished it on the way home and started the diet the next day. And yeah. we've never looked back. Mm. Mm. And as simple as that on the way, on the way down, I was so impressed and it, it, the stories of patients that you've worked with um, just made such an impact on both of us yeah. that we were like, we're doing this. Even as we were in California that weekend, we tried to just kind of remember the things that we were supposed yeah. to eat. But yeah, we, we just started right away. We're like, we're doing this. And her pain went away almost immediately. I mean, it was staggering. I'm like, why well, hasn't our doctors telling us this stuff? Exactly. <laughs> so. Well, you know, that is, it's, it's, it's clearly part of the problem. Number one, it's, it's almost too good to be true that it could be that simple. That's what right, we right. thought. That's exactly what we thought. You know, come on. Uh, you know, <laughs> you know, I, 
love the, the story of the young girl, like the college student from Wisconsin in the, in the plant paradox who has Crohn's or had Crohn's. Right, right. And, you know, cared for by the head of the Mayo Clinic GI department who felt that, you know, Crohn's is a genetic problem and that's all it is. And, right. and clearly there's a, you know, there is a genetic component to this. So right. I'll be the first to say that. Yeah. Um, but it's a very tiny portion of this problem. And so she, uh, she for folks who haven't read the book, uh, shame on you. You should read it. <laughs> you definitely, you should read it. <laughs> the uh, one of her mentors, she was actually funded, sent to college by a woman who wanted, who had Crohn's disease, and who wanted uh, kids to go into careers in immunology. So she actually, she and her husband, paid two scholarships for kids who said they wanted to be doctors, and so she was one of these. And this particular woman got cured of Crohn's disease um, in her 70s. Wow. And had it all her life. And uh, so she sent basically the plant paradox list, you know, all the S foods and L foods to this young lady. Mm -hmm. And she said, would you mind, you know, Skyping with her on the, on the phone? And this was around Christmas time. And I said, no, I'd be fine. So we get on Skype, a beautiful young lady, 20 years old. and. She said, you know, when, when my sponsor sent me this list, you know, she said, you know, I rolled my eyes because, you know, I have been on every diet for oh, Crohn's. Sure? And, you know, my doctor at Mayo Clinic says the diet has nothing to do with it. It's genetic and, you know, you're wasting your time. But this lady's paying my tuition. Uh, so she said, you know, okay, I'm going to do it. And she said, you know, within five days, I had the first normal bowel movement of yes. my life. Crazy, huh? And she said, you know, it all went away. So I, she said, last week I called my doctor at Mayo Clinic to tell him my Crohn's is gone. And he said, you know, that's ridiculous. You know, this is a placebo effect. You've been <laughs> right. duped. You know, he's a snake oil salesman. <laughs> right. I've never met the woman. Um, and he says, this is genetic. It's all in your mind. And she said, I was so upset, you know, that I'd been fooled normal bowel movement, I'm obviously <laughs> fooling myself, <laughs> that I went in and my mother was baking Christmas cookies. And I, I had two Christmas cookies. And she said within you know a few minutes, it felt like a bomb went off yeah. in my stomach. Mm. And then she had you know diarrhea a few hours later and cramps and the pain. Yeah. And she said, well, wait a minute, you know, this is not a placebo effect. This is <laughs> so she rude. said, I went right back on the, you know, the program and I'm, you know, I'm fine. And but she's looking at me in the in the camera and she says, you know, why doesn't my doctor know about this? Right. And I always say, you know, you can't see unless your eyes are open. And um you know, I was lucky enough 20 years ago to see that Big Ed had cleaned out his coronary arteries right. with food and some supplements. And I'm going, you know, I could have said you know, <laughs> placebo, I, you know, placebo <laughs> effect or, you know, that's just dumb luck. Right, right. But, you know, and she was able to, you know, see that there was something there. And, and sometimes you know, doctors just don't see it. There was a Facebook po posting yesterday on my wife's uh, feed about a person who's been on the plant paradox, was on three medications for cholesterol, for high blood pressure, oh, and also for atrial fibrillation, you know, an abnormal mm -hmm. rhythm of the heart. Mm -hmm. And the doc has been prescribing these meds. And so I guess after about six months of being on the plant paradox, they stopped all the meds and didn't tell the doctor. <laughs> and they, had just gone to the doctor's office and the doctor said, now, aren't you glad that I got you on these meds because, you know, you're staying out of atrial fibrillation, you have no high blood pressure, and, you know, this is gonna be something that you're gonna do the rest of your life, and, you know, here's your refills for next year. And they posted, you know, on Facebook, well, now I've got two years of prescriptions that I will never fill, and. I don't even bother discussing this with my doctor anymore because he'll say, that's impossible. Right, right. And even though, you know, he'll say, oh, you're actually taking them or something like yeah. that. Right. Yeah. No, I've, I mean, I've been off my medication for a year and I hated being on it because the, you look at the list of side effects, I you had reactions the to them, effects? I feel the side 
Do I hated being on immunosuppressants. Yeah. And, um, but they had the conversation, you're either on the immunosuppressants or you're on the operating table. One or the other, you pick. Um, well, and, Dave, and I've been off them for a year now and I feel better than ever. And fortunately my GI has been supportive in that, hey, if it's working, keep doing it. Good for him yeah. or her. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Dave actually with his Crohn's disease has had it so severe that he actually had a perforative bowel at one time. He went in in pain, they checked him and they said, you need to be on the operating table. Um, he had drove himself to the hospital, which is not okay, and called me at work and said, hey, I'm gonna be having surgery and- Come on down. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Can you come over and pick me up at this time? I'm gonna be on the operating table. <laughs> what? So. Yeah, so I'm glad to be off the meds and feeling awesome. And I, it's I mean, a miracle. It's, it really is a miracle. As long as we miracle. stick to the diet and sometimes yes. we cheat. I mean, we're human beings, you know, sometimes. What happens when you cheat? Immediately you feel it. Like I can feel it, it's weird. I feel it in my skin, I get rashes, um, my gut bloats up, mm -hmm. I get in pain, my bowel movements, you know, are affected. I feel it in my joints. Yeah. My joints will start to get sore and just achy again. And so quick. Very quick. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's funny, I, I take care of a lot of kids with, with Crohn's and uh, actually with, uh, juvenile rheumatoid arthritis mm -hmm. and kids are the you know the toughest um, probably because of peer pressure right. um, but these kids actually echo exactly what you say they they will cheat but what happens to them when they cheat is enough to you know to just pull them, it, pull them right back yeah. oh geez you know yeah that, you know, eating that pizza at Tommy's house yeah. uh, wasn't worth it. And yeah, so the kids are the toughest in a way, but they're, they're the smartest in a way because mm -hmm. they can't rationalize, you know, whoa, or, you know, and my joints swelled up. Uh, yeah. And that's, that's no good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to figure out how to get our kids, even though they're adults, eating better. Because even though we do it and they see the That's result, they miracle. still struggle. I mean, they don't they don't follow the diet, or they don't even really eat that healthy. So, well, yeah, and you know, it's sometimes it's really hard to get you know your own kids um, to follow what they see is happening to you, right. and they go, ah, "I'm young, I'm immune right. to this." <laughs> That's, I, it. That's it. I'm young. I'm bulletproof. Right. <laughs> Nothing's going to happen to me. <laughs> But they have to realize that, you know, there is a genetic component to yeah. this and they uh, almost certainly uh, react to lectins. They may not feel it yet, um, but it's, it's coming down the road. Yeah. Oh, it's coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I've, I've talked about, I have, uh, we have two daughters, one who's kind of been on the program almost for the last 15 years and is, is a real, uh, evangelist about the program. On the other hand, my, uh, our oldest daughter was the antithesis of that <laughs> and would not do it, would not listen, despite the fact that uh, she was significantly overweight, she had horrible headaches, a lot of depression, and she has two kids. And a year and a half ago, I handed her the plant paradox for Christmas. I said, look, don't, don't do this for me. Uh, don't do it for yourself. Uh, do it for my grandkids, mm -hmm. okay? And I, something snapped. And well, she and her husband lost 50 pounds. Wow, fantastic. And, and they, uh, the, the kids, that's all they eat. They've only eaten this now really for their whole lives. Wow. They that's love the perfect. chocolate chip cookies, and, but the amazing thing is, um, and I, you know, I love my daughters dearly, equally, but my daughter who wasn't a very happy person, now she calls me up, and says, "Hey, Dad, you know, and this is now a forty-year-old woman. Hey, Dad, you know, uh, man, you should, you know, what a great day at work, you know, uh, you know and." Uh, I got this great recipe I made. I want to share it with you. And I'm going, who is this really? And, That's uh, awesome. Yeah. It really is. And so 
And you know, I write about this uh, in the plant paradox and in the longevity right. paradox that these bugs in us are actually in control of almost everything about our mood, uh, about depression. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's amazing how you can you know, change all this stuff that you know you thought was just something in your head. Well, it was something in your head, but it was coming from your bugs. Yeah. And after experiencing that, I can say for sure that is so true. All right, so we get this question all the time, and you're the perfect people to answer this question. How do you get your partner, significant other, to join you in this journey when <laughs> one of you wants to and the other is not so sure? Well, I'll tell you my story, and Jen may have a different one, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I say, um, so when people ask me that, sometimes when I respond on the thing, I'm like, even if you just, your spouse isn't going to do it with you, even if you'll just go to them and say, hey, I'm going to do this to diet, hold me accountable. Um, because I do that with my kids. I'm mm -hmm. like, hey, I, you guys, I've been off the diet. If you see me eating something, come to me. And they will. Even though they don't follow the diet, they will be, dad. They will. Is that plant paradox compliant? So, uh, and that's so helpful. And another thing is, I feel like everyone as a person goes through waves of high motivation to low motivation. And you know, a lot of times our waves will kind of vary. And so maybe at a point where I'm feeling like, oh, I just don't want to do the preparation, Dave will be like, okay, let's go, let's plan this out. What are we going to do? And so he kind of pushes me a little bit and at his low, low motivation points, I push him. Yeah, and true. so it's just a beautiful partnership that, that we have. And I had to learn how to cook and I enjoy it now because um, I think that helps too. So you both need to become kind of chefs in the kitchen because I think it's a lot to ask one person to, you know, unless they have a lot of time, but yeah. Mm -hmm. No, or, you know, I'm usually the cook, but my wife is the sous chef and chops. Yeah, and exactly, exactly. She there does the go. cleanup. Yeah, exactly, uh, yeah. We have deals like that. <laughs> yeah. We, we definitely do that. One of us kind of cooks, the other one cleans yeah. up. Okay, perfect. And I do love your idea. It's amazing how many families tell me that their kids are the enforcers. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really, really interesting. Are. They go, I, I can't believe I told my kids to do this. Kids love they, you know, they rat me out. Right. And, yeah. true. Yeah, it's true. So when you started all this, did you really think you were going to do a YouTube channel about this? <laughs> or, no. you know? The story behind the YouTube channel is I, I have a background in filmmaking and I mean that's I, w I went to school for that I've kind of worked on and off in television and movies uh, throughout my life and um, so I'm, I kind of have a you know the notion to record things because you just never know all the time so I thought you know what we're starting <laughs> this new diet we're gonna do it together I initially thought by us by hand, telling Jan to use her phone and me to use my phone it sort of gave us a um, what do you, like like a babysitter, like, well, we have to record today to talk about what we did, almost making a journal. And I thought, you know what, now I'm gonna throw it on YouTube, mostly for family and friends. Mm -hmm. And then who knows, maybe somebody out who's doing this diet will find our videos and a lot more people found it than we thought. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. The review video we did on there just is about to 300,000 views and that was never part of the plan. Mm -mm. And then we found it, that community you know, and the support and all the testimonials that people were sharing with us, that just motivated us to keep doing it. And now we- Very inspiring. So now, yeah, we do. We try to do at least one video a week, so. Mm -hmm. Good for you. Yeah. 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 And so, so what was, what was the easiest part of doing all of this? If you could choose one thing. I feel like the easiest part, well, just the encouragement, especially for myself, because so quickly, all of the pain and suffering I had been going through, it was working doing the diet. And so that was the greatest reward. I mean, that was, that made it giving up the sugar. And I love sugar. <laughs> that was the hardest part. <laughs> that was the hardest part. And it was nice that we chronic, you know, that we had the video proof of that. So people can look and say, well, it wasn't just all roses and sunshine. It was hard. It was hard changing our style of eating, but we did it. And, and I, I think the easiest part for me that I tell people was becoming a food snob because I had eaten so much crap food and not, and not realized all these healthy foods, how much better they taste. 
I'm like, I became a food snob. I'm like, I'm not eating that. It's, is it grass fed? Is it, you know, <laughs> where's that cheese from? If it's not Italian, I'm not eating it. Cause that's <laughs> like, it was so easy to become a food snob because not only is it healthy for you, but the food just tastes so much better. Amazing. It's incredible how often we will invite people over for dinner and cook a recipe. And this is amazing. This is so good. Yeah. It's really fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'll never forget the first time we we took uh, lemon cod liver oil and mixed it in with our olive oil in a salad dressing when we had guests over and they're raving about the salad. <laughs> and you know, and they go, What you know, what's your secret? And I said, I'm cod liver oil. And <laughs> <laughs> true story. I believe it. I believe it. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, so you guys obviously have lots of followers. Um, so, are there? Give me three tips for somebody who's thinking about doing this or just diving in. I go ahead. Try I, one. Yeah. Um, be prepared. Be prepared. <laughs> be prepared. Um, we found that if we can sit down together on you know Friday, Saturday, and say, this is our meal plan for the week. Okay, do we have all of our snacks? What shopping do we need to do? Let's get a list and have it all. Um, I will, you know, hard boil eggs. I will, you know, set up little nut packs so that I can just, as I'm heading out for work for the day, I can grab each of my snacks. I'll pre-freeze meals. I have all that because we would find that if we hadn't prepared, and we were tired, we were hungry, well, let's just have something that's gonna make us feel terrible. <laughs> let's and just get so fast food just once. Just, <laughs> this, just once we can do this. So the more prepared you are, the more geared you are for, that, for the week, the smoother it's going to be. Yeah. And then for me, I think the, the tip that I, I always tell people that we're gonna try this diet, and this was straight out of your book, um, and I, remember, I think you said in your book, you say, give me two weeks. Yeah. I tell people, take it to three and do it 100%. <laughs> and I mean, do not cheat because I'm tired of people saying, I tried diet A, B, or C. And then you talk to them and you're like, you didn't really do it. Mm -mm. This is, you got to treat it like a marriage. If you're cheating, it's not going to work, you know? It's, yes. <laughs> so give it three weeks and do it 100% because then I figure they'll probably at least make it two weeks. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, so... Yeah, you got you got to you got to go all in. And, yeah. You know, I've got I've got posters of Yoda and Yoda dolls in my exam room, and everybody you know, looks at Yoda <laughs> in my exam room. And go, What's Yoda doing in there? And I say, because Yoda says, "Do or do not." Right, there, right. Is there is no, no try. Right. Yeah, you have to. Do and, it. I, and I get you know so many patients that come in and say, you know, I this diet doesn't work or this program doesn't work, and I'm yeah. looking at their lab. And you just point to Yoda. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and we'll do so i'll say well you know what did you have for you know breakfast yesterday uh, you know a, a bagel and i go <laughs> huh well that was special because you know i right, was, right, I was right. out that day right. and that was all there was or yeah. you know and, and it just goes on and i used to do have people do two-week food diaries and smart and it was it got to be too comical right. because you know well that that day that doesn't count right um, and you know then you'd see you know birthday cake well you know <laughs> it was it, it was an office party right. and I didn't want to be yeah. well no you know you, you either do this or you don't yeah and particularly with autoimmune disease absolutely yeah. unfortunately as you both know you you really can't cheat you and cannot. you'll pay the price you will yeah. pay. Yeah. And I figure, you, you know, it's not asking much to say 100%. Anybody can do that. I mean, you can. You just got to decide to do it. You just have to put your mind Yeah, I just it. ask people to eat like it's 9,999 years ago. <laughs> and, you know, to coin prints. I like that. Because, yeah. <laughs> you know, none of this yeah. current stuff existed. Right. We, none of us yeah. ate this stuff. And it's amazing to think about really what we've eaten in the last 50 years. That yeah didn't change. exist absolutely yeah. yeah so and i you know i talk about the plant paradox there was a wonderful doctoral dissertation from akron university and i'm sorry i don't remember her name right now but uh, she looked at the change in consumption of kids over from 1900 to year 2000 
what changed in them. And it, it was called From Farm to Fat Kids. Right. And they looked at everything, sodas, sugars, everything. The only two things that they found was consistent causing obesity in American kids over the last hundred years was the change in pizza consumption and the mm. change in fried chicken consumption. Wow. Yeah. Not surprising, but yeah, wow. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, we forget the pizza wasn't invented until 1898. It didn't exist. Yeah. And we forget that chicken was actually incredibly rare to eat as a food because they were too valuable as hens that laid eggs. Right. right. And the only time we ever ate a chicken was when the old hen couldn't lay anymore and she became a stewing chicken because she was so tough. Right. And that's why an instant pot is so useful for a pastured chicken because they're pretty tough. <laughs> right. <laughs> it really helps. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you got any favorite plant paradox recipes? Um, I really enjoy the recipes in the book. They're yeah. fabulous. They're we feed them, you know, to our kids, to friends that come over for dinner. Actually, one of my favorites is by Annabelle Lee. She's behind California um, Country Girl. Country, Country Girl. Girl. Yeah. Yes, and she was on your show. That's how we learned about yeah, her. On, actually, on this podcast. Yes. So now you and her are. You know, <laughs> we like really this. are. She's wonderful. She's come on our show. She's cooked with us. One of my favorite things she makes is a meatless chicken nugget. Uh, we fed that from kids to adults. Everyone has really enjoyed that. And then just to give my wife some credit, she took a recipe, the artichoke, uh, fried artichoke recipe mm -hmm. from the Plant Paradox book and said, I wonder if we could take, make a batter out of that same mix and use it to coat um, cocktail shrimp and then make shrimp tacos. And so we put them in cassava flour we, and we toyed with it a little bit and made some... Uh, shrimp taco recipe with just lettuce, some um, little bit of lime, lime and goat cheese, goat cheese well, uh, goat cheddar cheese, and there's mm -hmm. avocados, and they are, we serve them On to people. On a cassava tortilla. And people think they're some of the best tacos they've ever eaten, and, I'm like, and I don't even tell them they're healthy, because then. <laughs> Why ruin it for no. them? The, the cod liver oil story. You That's know? right. Yes. <laughs> Well, we have, you know, we have our great recipe developer, Kate, in the studio. Yes, yes. Day, her. So I need to tell that our son, who's the pickiest eater, yes. his favorite recipe is Dr. G's chili. If huh. we made a whole batch of it and left it for him, he would not complain. So there's right. some really good chili. Very good. Yeah. All right. So you got a lot of followers and you've helped a lot of people. Uh, you got a favorite story that you've gotten back from many of your followers? I think uh, it's hard to narrow it down to a favorite story, but I think the... Uh, the oh, choose one. Okay. <laughs> uh, I, I think the thing is, 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 is uh, I had a, a lady who was in her late 70s, I think she was 78, 79, and um, suffered from a whole list of things and had a whole list of medications she was on. And she said, I found about, out about this... Uh, sorry. She said, I found out about the plant paradox because she came and watched one of our recipe videos. And then she saw our review and then she got your book and read it. And she said, six months later, I'm off all of my medications. At 79 years old, I feel better than I have in the last, I think it was 20 years. And uh, that kind of validated, you know, like, you know, like we felt like we were kind of contributing in a way, you know, like helping bring awareness. And so that, that kind of, that happens all the time now. <laughs> Yes. But that, that's my favorite story. And the yeah. love and support. They, yeah. they're, and I just, it's incredible. And, and really, it's wonderful for everyone to have the support system when you have people around you that are not eating healthy and you're like, well, maybe just one bite. No, no. You know, we're yeah. going to stick to this diet. We want to feel good. And we have felt amazing. So like one of your days. most famous videos is the seven myths of the plant paradox? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do for a long time because as you can probably imagine, we get a lot of people commenting, emailing, contacting us through Instagram to let us know how stupid we are because we're being <laughs> duped. And I'm like, tell them I got that. <laughs> you live yeah. my life. I don't, even yeah. if it is placebo. Snake oil effect, sells me. Even if it's snake oil or placebo, I'm like, I don't care what it is, it's working. It's working. Who cares? You know what I mean? Um, and so, so what are those seven myths? So real, go. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that you can't eat tomatoes, that you can't eat beans, that you can't eat fruit, that you... Um, uh, uh, there no, no And there's the no, no grains at all. 
Um, and that you, what's the other one I said? Um, lectins. Oh, that all lectins are bad. Mm, yeah. And, um, and then the other one that, that I put out there as a myth, but it's, it's just to help people understand, was that you absolutely have to cook, pressure cook beans to remove all the lectins. Because I, I'd seen some people say, well, what about the people who don't have pressure cookers? They live in a third world country or whatever. I'm like, well, you can still so? <laughs> prepare them. It's just that if you have a pressure cooker, you should use a pressure cooker. Because it's so easy. Yeah. So easy. Yeah, so yeah. easy. So easy. So those are the myths. And what people don't realize, I think, is they either haven't read the book or they didn't get to the phase three and they just don't understand the program. They see right. the yes, no list in phase two and think that's the program. And I'm like, well, finish the book. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. I recently had a new patient from originally from India, mm. and uh, it was interesting. They said, well, everybody in India knows that when we have pulses like chickpeas or lentils, you have to pressure cook them. Yeah. Yes. And she, she said, you know, my mother taught me that, my grandmother taught her. And she said, you know, we'd blow up a few pressure cookers, but everybody knows you got to do that. Yeah. And I said, well, how did everybody know? Said, well, because, you know, grandmother, you know, passed lived with down. us and passed it down. And, you know, we've lost all that uh, yeah. modern conveniences. Okay, so, you know, you're, you're superstars of the internet. <laughs> uh, you, know, you have vibrant health. You're both going to live to 120 yeah. and in good health. What's next? Where do you, where do you go from here? Well, your sounds like a book plug, but in reality, your Longevity Paradox book came out at the perfect time for us because we are deciding, you know, what do we do here? And now we realize um, this is a lifelong thing. Our goal is to just be healthy as long as we can possible. And we've decided we're going to stay on the plant paradox lifetime, lifetime. and we'll probably stick with intermittent fasting yes. for that time too, because that has been a lot easier. When I first saw you say, I only eat one meal a day. I'm like, that's crazy. Nobody can do that. <laughs> I do that all the time now. It's, yes. it's not that hard. So I think that's kind of our long-term plan. Uh, and also we would love to get our kids. Yeah, the kids. On the, on the ball, get them on the program, just because we have enjoyed such good health. And when you have that in your life, you want to share. You want to share the good news and say, hey, do you want to feel awesome for the rest of your life? Do you want to be mobile and... Um, we yeah. just love sharing the message. Also, uh, I know we're starting to exercise. Yeah, exercise for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which has been very limited with everything that's going on. Yeah. So we're excited about that. Good, good. When, uh, I read a book a couple of years ago, actually before I started writing The Longevity Paradox. The book is called, I'm Going to Live to 120. And it basically says, okay, and the guy is 60 when he writes this, and he says, okay, I have decided that I'm going to live to 120 years of age. What am I going to do now that I have decided to live <laughs> right. that long to do that? And so he, you know, he breaks down, okay, here is, I'm going to do this, that's what I'm going to do, and how am I going to get there, and what am I going to do along the way? Yeah. And I think that's a great way to look at it. Rather than, you know, we're just rushing for, for the end and, you know, it doesn't look very pretty. Uh, how, <laughs> right. You know, how we, you know, we're not rushing to the end, right? Yeah. We're enjoying it. Yeah. Smelling the roses along the way. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, good. Um, so normally we have an audience question, but today we have the audience here. <laughs> so Jan and Dave, you're gonna ask me questions. Yeah. All right, and I love this question, so go ahead, give me the first question. So my question is, because I have Crohn's disease, um, even though I feel great, I can't eat some of the like cruciferous foods, I, even basic iceberg lettuce, if I eat too much of it, I blow it up, I get cramping. I want to get to, and I haven't even dared to eat spinach, broccoli, oh, no. kale for, the entire time I've been on the plant paradox because it affects me so badly. So I want to know, can I get my gut to a point to tolerate that? And is there, and or are there supplements <laughs> I can take to, because I feel like I'm missing out on those nutrients. So, um, so it's interesting. I, I just did a podcast with Ben Greenfield uh, this week. And uh, Ben has actually had an epiphany. Uh, ben gets to have lots of epiphanies. <laughs> And Ben says, you know, for years I was cramming kale smoothies down me. I was 
eating green, you know, four times a day. And then I, I can't remember if he said I'd listen to you or something, but he started t talking about uh, tubers and resistant starches. And of course, in the longevity paradox, I talked a lot about that. And he says, so I just made a change and now I'm eating mostly resistant starches mm -hmm. and I'm not eating very many greens. And he said, what do you think about that? Well, well hidden in the plant paradox is if you have any GI issues, if you have irritable bowel, if you have Crohn's, if you have colitis, don't come near uh, these greens. Right. Uh, what people, it's hard to get people to realize that all plants have lectins in them and they are the defense system. And bitter greens are bitter because they're trying to tell you that you don't really want to eat me because <laughs> I'm going to attack you. And I'll yeah. tell you a personal story that I've shared before. A few years ago, uh, my wife Penny bought a Nutribullet, right? Mm -hmm. yes. right, right. And she said, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna make you a, a kale smoothie, a pure kale smoothie. Now, we eat kale and do fine with it. So she made a kale smoothie, and um, I drink it on the, on the way to work. And about, you know, an hour later, <laughs> And tense cramps, and then a few hours later, you know, I'm on the toilet, and I'm like, what the heck? You know, I eat kale all the time. Well, what I hadn't realized was I was eating kale leaves, and it was taking quite a while for my digestion to break all those down and, and slowly hit those right. lectins. What she had done inadvertently is expose every one of those lectins <laughs> oh, to wow. an in instant bomb. So. Uh. You know, so yeah, so that's why you, in general, number one, maybe can never eat those things. Okay. But number two, you don't have to worry about those things. Well, that's good. I, I happen to think there are some excellent components in cruciferous vegetables that you can take as a supplement and actually list them, you know, in the book. Um, yeah. So you're not missing out on anything. Now, having said that, don't you know? Beat yourself up that you know you're you're missing out on something. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay. And we also had Dave Asprey on this program, and Dave thinks kale is you know just lethal, oh. and you should never <laughs> eat kale. So don't don't feel bad. So I'll think of that. Yeah. Okay. All right. No. So you're not missing out on anything. And yeah. So and make sure you know when people are watching your YouTube, um, they. If you've got a bowel issue, that's kind of the last thing I want to get in you right now. Okay. And if you really want to get those things in you, then cook them to their death before <laughs> you eat them. They should be, that helps. They should be mush. Okay. Can and actually help? try an experiment, pressure cook them and see what you oh, think. Okay. Okay. In small quantities. In small, <laughs> yeah, little <laughs> tiny doses. Okay, Jan, uh, your turn. Okay. So, as you know, Dave and I have been on the Plant Paradox program for about two years. Um, at the beginning of the year, we decided to introduce intermittent fasting. Um, and then about six weeks ago, we decided to do kind of a keto version of the Plant Paradox. Mm -hmm. I've noticed, you know, in that six week time, I've lost 10 pounds and about six and a half inches off my waist. Um, I want to continue to lose a little more weight. Before I had my health issues, I was a very small. I was like a size six on heavy days. Um, and I'd like to get back down to that. Um, do you think that I should continue the keto component along with plant paradox? Or what would your advice be with that and maintaining that size? Do you have to be on keto your whole life, so to speak, you know? Well, interestingly enough, most people who think they're on a ketogenic diet actually are never in ketosis. Right. And I, <laughs> I measure ketones in, in our office uh, on, on blood work. And right. one of the mistakes, and I, I talk about this quite a bit, is that people somehow think a ketogenic diet is a lot of protein. And right. it's yeah. absolutely we, not. Yes. <laughs> right. And you'll notice chapter 10 of the plant paradox is the keto version of the plant paradox. Yeah. And I basically want people to eat about 80% of their calories as fat, preferably olive oil, avocados. Yep. 
If you don't have the ApoE4 gene, and 30% of people do, uh, coconut oil is great. Uh, MCT oil is probably safe for everybody. So um, you can stay on that program really the rest of your life. But I think one of the things we have to realize is that there's no evidence that our ancestors were always in ketosis. And certainly looking at modern hunter-gatherers hunter who still live in primitive conditions, they clearly go through periods of ketosis where there wasn't any food or they're walking 20 or 30 miles to the next you know, campground. But when they hit the jackpot, when it's fruit season or they find you know, a hive or the animals are fat and they're all around them and you, you, know, you reach out and grab an animal, they'll eat everything in sight. And so the idea that we should always be in ketosis, I think is a big mistake. Uh, Dr. Joseph Mercola, you know, admitted uh, that being in ketosis chronically made him worse. Um, to, to, to Dr. Mercola's uh, credit, when he does something, he dives in 100% and to find out, you know, what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. And he's even now backed off that water fasting, which a year ago he thought was the greatest thing since sliced bread, and we know how bad sliced bread is for you. <laughs> yes, uh, we do. So he now says, you know, I made a big mistake in recommending you know, prolonged water fasting. And I talk about that in the longevity paradox, that people don't realize that we store our heavy metals in our fat cells. Mm -hmm. And when we lose weight rapidly, those heavy metals come out of our fat cells and our liver, unfortunately, has a really lousy system for detoxification of heavy metals. So that uh, this was actually proven years ago in the Biosphere 2 experiment in Arizona. Right. And if you don't know about it. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm familiar with it. <laughs> so these guys lost about a third of their weight in six months. And one of the, the medical doctor, uh, Ray Walford from UCLA, actually chronicled their heavy metals. And they went sky high, and they stayed high for a year mm. before they came down to normal. So, you know, prolonged water fasting, I think prolonged rapid weight loss is not a good idea. And it's okay to cycle. Uh, Dr. McCullough likes you to break your ketosis once a week. He does it with fruit because he's got two acres of organic fruit where he mm. lives in, on his property. Uh, I think it's better to break it with uh, resistant starch, like a purple sweet potato mm -hmm. or something okay. like that. Okay? Okay. Yeah, that's and good. then get right Thank on you. it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Good. Thank you for those good questions. Yeah. Thank you. And yeah, that's a, your question was spectacular because, <laughs> yeah, you guys with GI issues just don't. Don't go, <laughs> just don't go there. It'll be well, all right. Like every healthy recipe has spinach, kale, mm -hmm. and they're like the staples. I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, so. even though I say more bitter, more better, yeah. in you, that bitterness is saying, hey, yeah. you don't want to eat me. Mm -hmm. But I'm olive sure oil, I'm good with, with, so that's okay. Then. Yeah, yeah, olive oil you're great with. Yeah. Okay, Dave and Jan, it's so great to finally meet you. Please keep up the uh, evangelical work. You've obviously been duped, and you know, thanks for drinking the Kool-Aid. We, we really we got some right here. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So let's all go. have some Kool-Aid. All right, so that's it for the Dr. Gundry podcast, live with uh, YouTube. So tune in next week. I'm Dr. Gundry because I'm always looking out for you. Before you go, I just wanted to remind you that you can find the show on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Because I'm Dr. Gundry, and I'm always looking out for you. Thank you.